Ladies and gentlemen of the world, I present to you a video game which I have been looking forward to and have been playing since the alpha was first released. Welcome to what was formerly known as Keystone, The Amazing Eternals. Now you're going to be wondering what the hell is this game? Well, it's a first person shooter card game. Yeah, you kind of heard me right there. First person shooter card game. For those looking at the footage right now and are about to say, oh look, another Overwatch clone. No, it's nothing like Overwatch apart from the fact that it is a first person shooter. Please shut the hell up about say it's an Overwatch clone. So ladies and gentlemen of the Eternals universe, here are my first thoughts on the closed beta since I'm not allowed to talk about the alpha. So first off, this game is all based around 60s and 70s culture. So you got unusual comic book heroes, television, as well as the whole atmosphere. Hell, even the board games and the boosts look like they were from the 70s, as do the heroes. So the current Eternals that are in the game right now are Bristle, a tree-like tank which sort of resembles Groot from the Guardians of the Galaxy, Dread, a soldier with a skull face and some sort of metal head. Nautica, who seems to be Aquaman's wife, who is a support that uses water to heal. Ray, a spaceman who is all about control. And Winter, a bounty hunter with a metal face. There is another hero which you'll actually have spotted at the beginning of this video known as Naya. She was available in the alpha but is currently out due to a few bugs. All five or six of these characters have their own unique personalities. All of these heroes will interact with each other in the game, whether it be spawning, regaining health, or spotting an enemy. I was made for this. No I was. All of these heroes also have their own unique set of weapons, upgrades, and tools to help you with your gameplay style. For example, Dread can utilize a rocket launcher known as the Ravager, whilst also using a card known as Better Bag to increase the damage of his electric grenade. Speaking of these cards, creating a deck on this game requires quite a lot of thought into your playstyle. Building the wrong deck could result in some rather tragic consequences. You can purchase more of these cards by buying card packs through microtransactions or leveling up through the game. You'll get five cards in each pack, ranging from common to epic. Getting into the gameplay now, and you are greeted with four different maps and two different game modes. One is your standard team deathmatch, which is actually barely found in this game. And then there's one of the most interesting game modes I've ever heard of, known as Fragment Fight. Starting off in Fragment Fight, you must all work together to capture the neutral fragment. If you capture the neutral fragment first, you get the first assault. This means you can go after the enemy fragment first. Take this fragment down and you move on to the next and the next. And if you take them all down consecutively, you win the game. But if you fail to capture an enemy fragment, you must then defend your fragment. You can also win the game by how many fragments and how many successful defenses you have completed within the 15 minute time limit. This is the mode you're mostly going to be playing. Like I said, Team Deathmatch is quite rare on this game. Just be aware of the amount of lag you will be experiencing in the game. There's also a few other bugs in the game that isn't just lag. For example, there was a point where Fragment Fight sort of stopped and it all became a Team Deathmatch. And then there's the crashes, which thankfully have been fixed in the last patch amongst other bugs which I've discovered as well. Overall, I actually really like the concept of the Amazing Eternals. Sure, there's loads and loads of arena first-person shooters right now, but I feel that this one really does stand out from the crowd. Characters have a good bit of personality, the cards are quite useful, and the unique art style really does set it apart. I still think there's a little bit of polishing that has to be done, and Nia needs to be released ASAP, but overall, it's very likeable in its own unique way. So, Eternals Universe, what do you think of this game? Comment down below, and I shall see you all real soon. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.